Alrighty folks, today I'm gonna take a slightly deeper dive into a pretty fun ingredient, burr. Let's go. First of all, right off the bat, let me just say, I'm gonna pronounce this burr. Now there's only one other word I've ever seen spelled with a R-R-H and that's mer, M-Y-R-R-H. And that's pronounced myrrh, like frankincense and myrrh. That's all I've ever heard it pronounced. Apparently, this bottle is pronounced in French more like beer or beer. But, you know, in English, I'm not going to start calling it beer because that's just going to be confusing with beer. So anyway, I'm just going to call it burr. Uh, you'll know what I mean. If I say burr, I mean this bottle. If I'm pronouncing it wrong, well, so be it. So now that we're on the same page, what is burr? Well, it's classified as a kina kina. Uh, and that name is derived from the fact that it's bittered with chinchona bark. Kina Kina is what the native peoples of Peru and Bolivia called the tree that this bark comes from. So in the 1600s, missionaries discovered that locals in the area were using this bark for its medicinal effects. They brought some back to Europe. Now this was good because Europe's having a malaria problem and the quinine that's inside the chinchona bark from the Kina Kina tree Cures malaria. Prevent malaria? Cures malaria? I don't know. I'm not a doctor. So in 1820, they actually isolated the quinine that's inside the chinchona bark uh, and started adding it to all sorts of beverages, including tonic water. And quinine, you know, it'll get credited with all sorts of magical medicinal powers that it doesn't really have. It does help with malaria, though. Now, burr comes from the Catalan region of France, uh, which is very close to Spain. It was invented by a couple of brothers called the Violet Brothers. Violet Frere, Violet Frere. I don't know how to pronounce French. Frere means brother in French. Now these two brothers had a wine shop in a town in France whose name I can't pronounce. And they came up with this recipe you know, to sell more wine. Now apparently the name is just a random collection of letters that they had lying around in their shop written down on something. I don't know if that's true, but in any event, and it's called burr now. Now burr is wine based, it's 18% alcohol, and they're using the original recipe from 1866. According to the label, it uses generous wines and elegant mistels. I don't know exactly what that means, but it tastes pretty good. I think this bottle cost me $20, something like that. It's not super expensive. Now, I'm just gonna taste a little. Um, it's got, it's kind of a darkish red color, kind of opaque. A little darker than some of the other ones you see, like, um, Cookie Americano Rosa is oh, quite a bit paler than this, I think. It's got a kind of a winey smell. Hmm. Yeah, it's very, it's very fruity. It's a little sweet, it's not super sweet. And it's got this sort of lingering sort of bitterness. It's not like super bitter but it's got just sort of a little something at the end. It's got some very light herbal notes and this sort of a slightly bitter uh, finish to it. Now, it's not really a vermouth, but it's kind of vermouthy. It's wine-based, so you'll want to keep it in the fridge. It's not quite as herbal as vermouth. It's a little, got a sort of different sort of bitterness to it, but you could substitute it in vermouth drinks to sort of make a fun variation. Like you could put it in your Manhattan, for example. Um, you could try it in a Negroni or something like that. That might be pretty fun. You could definitely use it in anything that called for Dubonnet uh, or even port. Um, but it's not like a really essential bottle that you have to have right away. If you were just getting into drinks, I'd say definitely get yourself off some different vermouths first and maybe move into port or Madeira. Um, this is more of a kind of a weirdo one, but it's super fun to play around with. Now I've got a cocktail I'm going to make. It's called the Bentley. It's an old drink from the, I think the 20s or 30s. It's in the Savoy cocktail book. And supposedly it was invented by the Bentley boys, which were some English uh, auto racers. That's probably not true. But anyway, it makes a good story. Now, the Bentley is just equal parts apple, brandy, and Dubonnet. I'm not gonna use Dubonnet. I don't really like it. I've got this burr here, I'm gonna use that. Now, this drink does benefit, I think, from some added bitters. I'm gonna use Peixos. And I also like it to be just a little sweet, so I'm improving things with just a bar spoon of maraschino. If you didn't want to use maraschino, you could actually use orange liqueur, you could use um, Saint Germain, some other sweet liqueur of your choosing. It's really up to you. There's no rules. Anyway, let's go mix this up.
give this a try. Mm. The Calvados and the wine sort of mesh into this nice fruitiness. I really like putting a little bit of that maraschino in there. It just sweetens it up just a little bit at the end. The burr's got this uh, sort of pleasant sort of drying bitter aftertaste. It's not like super bitter. It's just got a little a little zing at the end of a, of a bitterness. I, I really like it. I'm not really detecting the Peixos bitters, but you know, you know how bitters are. They, they, they add a little something that maybe you don't notice, so. Delicious, delightful. I, I love a variation. I don't mind improving a thing. Those drinks from Savoy are, some, some of them are crazy. And this one, you know, could use some improvement. Thanks for coming along on my burr journey. Make sure and check out the Pisco Punch video from a couple weeks ago. Uh, if you wanna have another great idea for burr. Um, in the meantime, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.